This video will begin a lecture series on the nervous system. We are going to cover an overview of the nervous system in this video. There are two organ systems dedicated to coordination and control of all bodily functions. Those two systems are the endocrine system and the nervous system. The endocrine system communicates by means of chemical messengers called hormones that are secreted into the blood for long-term control of the body systems. The key here is that the endocrine system uses hormones for long-term control of the body. The nervous system, on the other hand, is going to employ electrical and chemical means to send messages very quickly from cell to cell for short-term control of the body. So while both of these systems coordinate all of the activities of our body, the endocrine system takes a little bit longer to initiate a response and it is going to focus on a broader long-term objective, whereas the nervous system is going to use both electrical and chemical signals and this is going to take care of our body in the very short term and have very immediate responses. The nervous system carries out coordination in three steps. We're going to start with our sense organs and nerve endings, and these receive information about changes in the body and the external environment, and then transmit messages to the central nervous system. Our sensory neuron here is going to receive information from the environment. This environment could be inside of our body, or it could be environmental information, and that information is transmitted to our central nervous system. Our central nervous system is then going to process this information and determine a response. So now we are in our central nervous system. We can say that this is our brain or we can say that this is our spinal cord. And we are going to send a response through a motor neuron or through an effector. So our CNS is going to issue commands primarily to muscle and gland cells to carry out such responses. So it depends on what body system we're talking about, but we may have several motor neurons involved in this action, okay? But our motor neurons are always going to carry information from the CNS out to our effectors. And we're going to talk about what is an effector later on in this video. So in that last slide, we mentioned the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. These are our two anatomical subdivisions of the nervous system. Our central nervous system is going to consist of the brain and the spinal cord, which are enclosed and protected by the cranium and the vertebral column. So we can see in both of our pictures that our central nervous system consists of our brain and our spinal cord. And so it is going to be this area here that I am highlighting in red. And that's it. That's our whole central nervous system. Our peripheral nervous system, on the other hand, is all nervous tissue outside of the central nervous system. So in our picture on the right, we see all of our peripheral nervous system outlined in blue. And then on our picture on the left, it's all of this yellow fibers that are coming out um, from our brain and spinal cord. And this brings us to a little bit of vocabulary. In the central nervous system, when we talk about groups of cell bodies, those are going to be called nuclei in our central nervous system, but they're called ganglia in our peripheral nervous system. So we're both talking about groups of cell bodies, but in our CNS, we call them nuclei. And in our PNS, we call them ganglia. And we can see some ganglia outlined here on the left. 
these round yellow bundles, those are going to hold cell bodies in our peripheral nervous system, including this entire line here that's called our sympathetic chain ganglia. So groups of cell bodies outside of the central nervous system are called ganglia, and inside of our central nervous system we call them nuclei. Similarly, we can use different vocabulary when we're talking about bundles of nerve fibers or bundles of axons that are wrapped in fibrous connective tissue and carry signals to or from the CNS. In our central nervous system, we call these bundles of nerve fibers tracks, and in our PNS, we call these groups of nerve fibers nerves. So again, in our picture, we can see nerves outside of our central nervous system going to all sorts of different locations. Those are nerve fibers. But if we're talking about axons traveling up or down the spinal cord, those are called tracks. So anatomically, we can divide our nervous system up into our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system, but we also have functional divisions of the nervous system. And we've already mentioned a little bit of this vocabulary when we talked about sensory information coming in to our central nervous system, then our central nervous system does the processing and we send motor information out. So that is going to really uh, talk about our functional divisions of the nervous system and we're going to start with our sensory division. Now you don't see the word sensory on our picture and instead you're seeing the word afferent. Some people pronounce that afferent. I prefer to pronounce it afferent because it reminds me that it starts with an A. Our afferent division or our sensory division is going to carry signals from our receptors to the central nervous system. So really what we're learning here is the direction that information is being carried. Information is being carried from the periphery into the central nervous system or towards our brain and spinal cord. We can really divide our peripheral nervous system and its functional divisions into two different categories. That is the autonomic or the somatic categories. Let's start with our somatic sensory division. Our somatic sensory division is going to carry information from our environment and about body position into our central nervous system. So our receptors are going to be located in our skin, in our skeletal muscles, bones, and joints. So the receptors in our skin give us information about our external environment, and the receptors in our muscles, bones, and joints give us information about our body position. So our somatic sensory division is going to be bringing information about our external environment to the central nervous system. So what can we say about our visceral sensory division, sometimes called the autonomic sensory division? So the word viscera means our organs. So our visceral sensory division is going to carry signals from the viscera of our thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities to the central nervous system. So again here, our name is helping us learn what we're doing. So our visceral sensory division is going to monitor our internal environment and our organs, otherwise called our viscera, and it takes that information into our central nervous system. So again, we have two functional divisions of the nervous system. We have our sensory division, which carries information to the CNS, and we have our motor division, also called our efferent or efferent division, which carries signals from the CNS out to our glands and muscle cells to carry out body responses. 
Again, I like to pronounce that E and say efferent instead of efferent because I think efferent reminds me how it's spelled and that it's different from afferent, whereas if you pronounce them efferent and efferent, there is less of a difference. But in both cases, we're taking information that begins in the central nervous system and carrying that out to the periphery, to our muscle, or to our glands. So once again, we can be thirsty. That is going to be our sensory input. We see that glass of water and we say, hmm, I'm thirsty. That sensory information comes into our central nervous system and our central nervous system decides what to do about that. And the decision is going to be to tell our arm muscles to contract and lift that glass of water to our mouth so that we can take a sip. This works for both voluntary skeletal movement and for involuntary skeletal movement. And just like our sensory division, we can divide up our peripheral nervous system into a somatic motor division and a visceral motor division. So our somatic motor division is going to carry signals from the central nervous system to skeletal muscles in order to produce voluntary and involuntary somatic muscle contractions. So our somatic motor division is always going to be stimulating skeletal muscle. Our visceral motor division often called our autonomic motor division, is going to carry signals from our CNS to cardiac and smooth muscle, glands, and adipose tissue. And this generally produces involuntary responses and operates on a subconscious level to produce visceral reflexes. This means that you don't have to think about contracting these muscles. So again, we want to emphasize that this is operating involuntarily. You don't have to think about your heart beating, or you don't have to think when you smell delicious fresh baked cookies that you are going to salivate. That happens without your intention. So with both our sensory and our motor divisions, we have talked about the visceral nervous system or the autonomic nervous system. So our autonomic nervous system is going to gather sensory information from our organs and send motor commands to our organs. And so we can see here our central nervous system in the middle connected up to all of our organs. And what I want you to notice is that we've got two different sides to our picture. We have a sympathetic side and we have a parasympathetic side. Our sympathetic ANS is going to prepare our body for action. And so we are going to accelerate our heartbeat, we dilate our bronchi to get more air into our body, and we are going to give our body more energy by converting glycogen to glucose. And so we're really preparing our body for what we call fight or flight. Our parasympathetic ANS, on the other hand, is going to calm our body down, it initiates digestion, it's going to do nutrient processing and distribution, it slows our heartbeat and our respiratory rate, and calms us. Because of this calming effect, we say our parasympathetic nervous system does rest or digest. So this is a great illustration of our autonomic nervous system. But we're really not going to know that much about our autonomic nervous system here in anatomy. We're going to focus on our somatic nervous system. But I do want you to know the difference between our somatic and our autonomic effectors.
So here we see again the term effectors. An effector is the organ that is carrying out that central nervous system command. So our somatic effectors are going to include skeletal muscle. Whereas our autonomic effectors or our visceral effectors, that's going to be our cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, glands, and adipose tissue. I also want you to be able to tell the difference between the basic function of our somatic, sympathetic, and parasympathetic divisions of our nervous system. So when you think somatic, I want you to think skin and skeletal muscle. When you think sympathetic, I want you to think fight or flight. And parasympathetic is going to be rest and digest. Okay, so now let's tie all of this together into a nice summary. We are going to begin with our central nervous system. Our central nervous system is going to have two-way communication with our peripheral nervous system. Okay, so when we have information beginning in our peripheral nervous system and coming up to our central nervous system, that information is going to be sensory or afferent. And when we have information beginning in our central nervous system and going down to our peripheral nervous system, that is going to be motor or efferent information. But we can divide our peripheral nervous system up into two different categories. So again, we have that two-way information, information coming from the central nervous system and going out, information starting in our peripheral nervous system and coming in. We're going to have our somatic nervous system. And remember, our somatic nervous system is going to be skin and skeletal muscle. And then our second division of our peripheral nervous system is our autonomic nervous system. And our autonomic nervous system is going to deal with our internal environment and our visceral effectors. And what were our visceral effectors? They were our cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, glands, and adipose tissue. But we can divide our autonomic nervous system up into two categories as well. We have our sympathetic nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system. Remember, our sympathetic nervous system does fight or flight, and our parasympathetic nervous system does rest and digest. That is going to conclude our overview of the nervous system. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.